FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Stacy Washington. Stacy Washington, Stacy on the right.com. She is now on Sundays, Sunday evenings, taking the old Mark Cox slot as he f- now has his own show moved to Monday through Friday, 12 to 3. And Stacy, I know you're very excited about the new program. Well, it's the same program, but it's on a new night. That's right. The new slot. The new slot. <laughs> Stacy on the right on Sunday night is what I've been saying. Oh, very good. Nice alliteration the there. Yes. <laughs> so, Stacy, we all woke up this morning, and if we had all listened to the media yesterday, we all would have assumed that the Brexit vote would have failed because that's what we were told all day yesterday. The polling was against leaving, and the and the and the the Brits were just going to have to be very happy with their little stew of EU and just suck on that and be done with it. And we woke up this yep. morning and freedom won. Well, I kind of had a little, like a tiny little inkling that it was going to go against the polling, mainly because polling has been wrong now for well over a year <laughs> on everything. That's true. Um, but there's a huge big deal that happened. I don't know if you, it, it's, it, it made news. Barack Obama went over there and he told the Brits in a very condescending way that they needed to stay in the EU. <laughs> And there was a reporter who said, well, I'm wondering why you, as the president of the United States, you know, why should we Britons listen to you on whether or not we should stay in the EU? This is something that's unique to Britain. America is not a part of the EU. You know, why should we listen to you? And he was like, well, and, and she asked him in a very pointed, almost rude way, which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> and she remained standing for his answer, which was long-winded, and he danced all around the issue and talked about that bus that he sent back and how there were two <laughs> Winston Churchill bus. And the point to all of it was, I get to drone on and on because I'm the president of the United States, and you should listen to me because I'm Barack Obama. And last night, the Brits, well, it was really yesterday for them, but... They raised their uh, pinky fingers and their middle fingers to President Obama and and Jim Chowdhury, that that hate monger, and everybody else has been saying they have to stay and leave their sovereignty at the door of Brussels. And they said we're we're going to take that back. We're going to control our borders. We're going to control our trade. We're going to have decisions made here in Britain for our people. And, um, you know, the rest of you guys can, as you said, they, they can go bite it, whatever. They're, they're done. Hey, Stacy. so effect on our presidential race? Yes, no, maybe? Are Americans paying attention to this? Does it does it sink in ever? I mean, well, I don't know. I don't know what, if Twitter's a good indicator, but last night I was tweeting a lot about Brexit, and there were a lot of uh, British flags, American flags, and people saying, you know, Barack Obama, this bodes very well for uh, Donald Trump because – this is about independence and freedom and taking the rule of law back. So I think it's I think it's a good indicator. I think Donald Trump needs to continue what he's been doing the past seven days, which is tightening his messaging, uh, getting his talking points together on a teleprompter and sounding more presidential, being more presidential, and attacking Hillary Clinton where she's weakest on her uh, laureate education, her her horrible performance with the Benghazi scandal, her email scandal, and the Clinton Global Foundation and how very little of the money that's donated to them actually makes it to those poor Africans she keeps talking about. Talking to Stacey Washington. Stacey has moved to a new time slot. Same show, new time slot, StaceyOnTheRight.com on Sunday evenings uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. Stacey, um, how about Trump's uncanny sense of timing, right? I mean, the the morning of the, uh, the vote, being announced and all that, and everybody in the over here waking up to it. He's over there in Scotland doing a victory lap. <laughs> so there, there's some stuff he does really well, and this is one of those things. And it's because he's from the television side now. You know, he's been used to kind of forecasting and saying what's in the news media, and then capitalizing on that for ratings. And so this is not, I mean, not surprising to me at all. The guy owns his own plane, so he's over there. He's capitalizing on the moment. He's celebrating with these people, and it raises his stature. And it's something that President Obama couldn't have done because he doesn't want the Brits to leave the EU. So it puts him um, in alignment with freedom and something special that's going on. This is like they don't have an Independence Day, obviously, but this could be a celebration that they, you know, kind of start off next year where they celebrate leaving the EU 40 years of giving away their sovereignty bit by bit until this year. 
Absolutely. Hey, Stacy, let's switch gears for a minute here. Uh, as someone who you can speak personally to the substance of this affirmative action ruling, as someone who you know you can claim ownership of uh, you know two minority classes, and do you think do you, <laughs> what what's your what's your what's your 2016 opinion on affirmative action? What the court did in this latest ruling on a very uh, a subject that's been around for decades and is constantly being debated and litigated. Well, yesterday, within the first hour of the ruling being announced by the Supreme Court, Project 21 and their Speakers Bureau issued a press release. We actually issued three. So many of us had comments on this, and um, I've been doing interviews on the subject since then, since yesterday, basically discussing where, in my opinion, this is a problem. We have uh, an issue with students who are coming from um, mid- to lower-tier academic K-12 through institutions. These are not institutions where they would normally end up at Harvard or Princeton, but they're being able to make it into Harvard or Princeton or a Big Ten state school because of affirmative action. The matriculation rates for these students where they actually graduate from college are abysmal, and there's a huge... Um, it's a huge statistical database showing that affirmative action is actually hurting the percentage of students who are black who graduate from college. Now, this is not a popular opinion. This makes me, you know, Queen Uncle Tom among sure, black people. Sure, sure, I bet it does. to address the root issue. But, Tim, there's something else here that I, I pointed out in the press release, and you can find it on my Stacey on the Right Show page on Facebook and also my personal page, but it's a public post. Um, there's, there, I think we pay a lot of attention to the end result, which is where students go to college, when we should be focusing in on how students begin. How many words has a student been spoke, has, had spoken to them um, coming out of their preschool years or coming from home? Usually it's 50,000 words for a white child, 20,000 for a black child. Mm. That's a word deficiency that starts at, at, for, at five years old for, for students. And then you go into the numbers, how high a child can count. And these deficiencies grow and expand over time until you're at the point where some students are in AP or they're taking international baccalaureate courses or they're they're doing these huge summer programs or even earning college credit as freshmen, sophomores, and juniors in high school. And then on the other end of the academic spectrum, you have students who are in really horrible Democrat-controlled public school Mm -hmm. districts and they're coming out with a 3.8 or a 4.0, but a 4.0 from that school is nothing like coming out of a 4.0 from a high-quality private school or, um, you know, number one rated school district. Exactly. So it, the, the end of what I'm saying is we have to focus on that. Parents have to be told, because everyone doesn't know that 20 minutes of reading is so important, that television watching should be relegated to the weekends. I know it's radical, but <laughs> you want kids with 4.0 um, – Grade point averages, do you want kids who read at the college reading level instead of the sixth grade reading level when they graduate from high school? There's so much data on this. I think we should focus our energies and our money on teaching parents this and making sure that they understand it's really your responsibility what type of education your child gets. And regardless of your educational level, you can accomplish great things with your kids if you do a few things. And if we talked about that, we'd see better rates of college graduation for black students and affirmative action, which is a blight on black people. It says we still can't earn it on our own. Uh That would have to be something that we can relegate to the history. Absolutely. It's a unique perspective from the extremely linguistic Stacey Washington. Hey, Stacey, as we wrap up here, uh, you have uh, have folks pinned down for Sunday night yet? You know, I don't have interviews pinned down yet, but I do still have really fun giveaways because we're kind of, I, I want people to remember that I'm on Sunday night. Yes. And I know there's, Annie has her new show on Saturday. So yes. There are a lot of changes. Um, but I'm just excited about the show. I got amazing feedback from Sunday night. I think it was a great move, and I'm really excited about doing it again this week. And my family time is just the whole weekend schedule is <laughs> so perfect now, Tim, and you know how that is. Well, and you'll have plenty, plenty to discuss on Sunday evening uh, without any problem there. So, <laughs> hey, Stacy, so thanks always, for doing the whole week. I thought I've enjoyed listening to you. Well, great thank, thank you so much, and we'll listen to you Sunday evening. Stacy on the right.